In a previous video, I showed how you can use the UC Virtual Labs for programming in this course, this semester, and you're definitely welcome to use that. A lot of people are going to want to use a local environment as well. That's fine as well. So I'm going to show you how to download and install NetBeans, which is a free IDE. It is ideal for this class for someone learning programming. It doesn't have the complexity of IntelliJ or Eclipse but it also has a lot of really good shortcuts that can get you productive very quickly. So first I'm going to choose download. I'll just grab the latest version, which at the time of this recording is, is version 8.1. I'm going to click download. Now I will warn you that this is going to be a pretty heavy download. There's a lot in it. Uh, okay, lots of options here. We have a very small Java SE, just if you, want, if you don't have a lot of disk space, want to download it quickly. Java EE contains all of the same things as Java SE, and it also adds features for uh, HTML5, which is handy, and then Tomcat and Glassfish, which is a server that we can use to run our Java programs. That sounds about right for me. Then there's an HTML5 and JavaScript only version, a PHP only version, a C and a C++ only version. My recommendation would be to get the Java EE version, uh, it's 192 megabytes, uh, so about twice as big as the Java SE or standard edition version only. But this is something that you could continue to use in other programming classes as well. Um, well, with a footnote, I will say in Android, we use Android Studio. And in Enterprise Web, we use Eclipse. But nonetheless, this one's kind of a nice balance between the minimalist and the everything. Everything you can get as well. They're all free. But I will say the less stuff you get, the less stuff there is to be confusing. Sometimes simpler is better. So yes, yeah, so this, this feels about right for me. I'm going to go ahead and grab this. I'm going to go ahead and hit download. As I mentioned, this will take a moment. So I am going to pause the video while it downloads. And with the magic of the pause button now, uh, NetBeans IDE 8.1 is installed, or I'm sorry, is downloaded. So let me go ahead and choose open. And we'll give it a moment. Now, this first question really, really doesn't matter too much for our class. To be honest, you could unclick both of these. I, these are the application servers that we can use to run server-side components, but we're not going to be doing any of that anytime soon. And we can always add them later. My preference, though, is Tomcat. I've worked with Tomcat for quite a while. I'm going to go ahead and, and choose Tomcat, because maybe I do want to use this later on. So I choose next, of course, read the entire license agreement thoroughly and accept and next. Okay, things that I install, I tend to put under a programs, just like a programs folder because it's easier to access them in DOS. So I might change this to programs. Now, one other thing that's interesting is that it's giving me an option here for JDK 1.7. That would be fine. But really, I want to use JDK 1.8, which I don't yet have installed on my computer. There's some nice things we can do in 1.8 as well, though. So before I continue with this installation, I'm going to go ahead and choose back. And I'm going to say JDK 1.8 download. And we'll go ahead and download and install that as well. So go to downloads. And uh, one moment. Uh, don't want seven. So go back to Java, and we're looking specifically for the JDK, not just the uh, not just the Java runtime, but actually the JDK itself. But now, one really interesting option here I see is pre-built VM for Java developers. Uh, that's a good idea. I do a lot of my full-time Java development in a virtual machine. That way, if I need someone to collaborate with me, I can just give them a copy of the virtual machine. They don't need to do any environment setup. It makes things really easy on us. But I'll go ahead and get uh, Java SE, click on this. And you see it actually, they offer a co-bundle with NetBeans. That's a good idea as well. That way you don't have to do two different installations. I'll go ahead and download this one here. Uh, let's see, and I want one for my operating system, which is gonna be Windows 64. So uh, let's find that license agreement. And it's up here, there we go. Okay, and so I'm going to go ahead and choose Windows 64. There we go. 
And once again, this will take some time to download, so I'm going to uh, pause the video as it downloads. Now the uh, JDK has been downloaded, so I'm going to choose Open. And we'll go ahead and choose next. I'm going to put this, I, honestly, this is one thing I typically put all the way out in the C drive. Just because it's common, as you saw in my very first programming video, you see it's common they have to use this on the command line. So I don't want to have to dig down to a very deep path. And many times I'll take this kind of sub build off and just say JDK 1.8. That's good. I choose OK. Uh, okay, anything else we need to change here? I think we're good. I'm going to choose next, and we're going to let it go ahead and install. Jerry is similar. I like having a shorter path for this, so I'm just going to say this PC, and then I'm going to say C, make new folder, and we'll say JRE 1.8. That'll be fine. Oh, no, 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 no. Oops, wrong way. Wrong way. Let's, let's try that one more time. So C. Okay, new folder, and there we go, JRE 1.8. Okay, that's what we want. I need to housekeep that uh, other folder I made by mistake. Choose next, and let's let it go. And now we get confirmation that it has installed. We'll go ahead and choose close. Now, you only need to do that part if your NetBeans installation either didn't find a JDK or the JDK that you had there was not the version that you wanted. If the dropdown shows the JDK that you did want, then that's fine. So now let me go ahead and restart the uh, installation of NetBeans. Just a moment. It's no longer down at the bottom of my browser, but in Chrome, Control-J will show me downloads. And sure enough, I see some things that I've downloaded just today for our videos, the VMware client, the JDK, and the NetBeans installer. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the NetBeans installer. And let's walk through those prompts one more time. Okay, again, uh, my, my personal preference is Tomcat. In this class, that doesn't matter. Uh, go ahead, read the whole license agreement, and then accept. Now you see it found JDK 1.8, which I like. That's, yeah, that's the more up-to-date Java development environment. It has some new things like streams that we can program against and filters, some pretty cool stuff. So then I'll choose next. Uh, yeah, that's, eh, I might shorten this one a little bit. Let's just make it Tomcat 8. And I'm also going to put it under that programs directory. Because again, if I'm working in a command window or a DOS window, a shorter path is to my benefit, less stuff I have to type. And then we go ahead and let it install. And now we see that the NetBeans setup is complete. I'm going to go ahead and choose finish and confirm that I'm able to start it. I simply choose start, and then I see NetBeans IDE 8.1. And just to confirm everything's working, I'd like to make the program that I made with Notepad++ earlier. So I'm going to say File, New Project, Java. Java application is fine. And next, uh, we'll call this one, we'll call this one, I'm going to call the project Hello. Uh, and then I'm going to leave this tick box checked where it says Create Main Class. I'm going to say hello.greetings. That hello is kind of like a qualifier. We'll call it a package. The nice thing is when I tick this box and I give a proper name here, so a, a package name dot class name, and then I choose finish, take a look at what it's going to do for me. It's going to create our program, and it's going to give it this public static void main method that we created in our Notepad++ program earlier. You see, it creates all this syntax, all the stuff I said, it's syntax, it's going to be a lot of symbols, don't worry about it. It creates all that syntax for me so I don't have to. Saves me a lot of time. Additionally, if I type SOUT and then hold uh, Control and hit Space and hit Enter, it gives me system out print line. So you see an IDE will save us a lot of time by taking these mundane, monotonous steps and making them automatic. Now in the double quotes, I just type in hello class, just like I did on our other program. And now I save, and now I simply choose run. And there we go, hello class. Do you see how easy that was? We didn't have to find the path of Java C. We didn't have to find the path of Java. Uh, and even if we mess up and maybe if we forget a symbol, it will tell us because it will put a red line. So essentially, it's compiling as we're typing 
so that it can tell us of any errors. So the IDE is our best friend. And you see, it's not a very complicated look and feel if you compare it to something like Eclipse or IntelliJ. They're just the highest priority things that you're going to want to do at any one time. It looks like there's a lot going on, but really this is a very simple interface for an IDE. It's perfect for someone who's just getting into IDEs, someone who's just learning Java. So we'll spend a lot of time in this this semester. Excellent. So in our next series of videos, we're going to see how we can create a more robust program with multiple classes, where a class is this thing called public class greetings that lives in the file greetings.java. So in this video, we saw how to make a source code file, a .java file, and then compile it into bytecode. The compilation happens automatically. We don't have to tell it to compile. We used to, but not anymore. It automatically compiles. And then pressing this play button, button is telling it to run in the JVM, uh, telling it to take that bytecode and run it natively on my computer, which happens to be a Windows computer. Very quick, easy to set up. So uh, we'll discover a whole lot more in the next series of videos, and I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.